Uh, hats off to Linfield. Um, you know, they brought in a fantastic football team with not only a lot of talent, but a lot of really good kids. And in speaking to Coach Smith uh, last night, in a short conversation, if you're paying attention to people's feelings, you can tell very quickly the level of affection that they have for their team. And he certainly has one <clears throat> as deep as we do for ours. And uh, that team deserves um, all the recognition that they get because it's, it's very impressive. And although it's easy for me to sit here, and you know if you've been here before that I don't like the word easy, <clears throat> but it's easier for me to sit here today than it is for them. And I think uh, that uh, our whole program and university credits their program and their university because, in my opinion, they're uh, wildly impressive. So that being said, uh, very proud of how our kids played today. Um, it, it's just very tough to put into words uh, all of the work, the time, and the effort that these guys give up. And it's not just it's not just the practices and the weightlifting. It's the routine and everyday commitment to this university. And uh, it's uh, not only humbling, but it brings me to tears at times. And uh, that's why I love these kids. <clears throat> I'll let them do it. Hello, I'm Anthony King Foreman. I play D-line. My name is Jesse Otto, and I play outside linebacker. My name is Jordan Roberts. I'm a running back. My name is David Simmons. I'm an offensive tackle. Sure, it was different. The team was different. This team is gravely different than the last two that we faced. So <clears throat> Wabash and St. John's were built very similarly, right? Run the ball, shrink the game, use the clock, play great defense. And uh, this game, I don't know if you guys felt it out there, but I'll tell you, I could feel it. It was a long game, and it wasn't just because of the 15 TV timeouts that the media had to squeeze in there. It was because they, you know, they get the ball and you know, they drive down the field and you look up at the clock and, and it, like a minute and eight seconds ticks off that thing and it's like holy buckets you know I mean that they can move in a very fast order and that's what they're built on um, so we knew it was going to be a long game so in that manner extremely different uh, we thought the way that we could approach them was a little different than the last couple as you could tell just simply by looking at the stats and <clears throat> the work that was done on offense and I'll tell you what it was not the, te the, the part of their team that does not get enough credit, in my opinion, is the offensive line on theirs. And so a lot of times our offensive line gets a lot of credit because Jordan rushes for 260 yards or whatever it might be, right? It's obvious. That's easy to do. But they pass 63 times a game. When you pass 63 times a game and you only get to get to the quarterback eight total times, that is really a credit to what they do. It's just what they do is a different style than what we do. But both are wildly and equally impressive. <laughs> No, they have. And yes, it is the fastest team that we've seen. I will say that Gustavus, our league prepares us well, as we talked about in the same room two weeks ago. And I think uh, it was very similar to the game plan in Gustavus. Now, when you're facing a team, it's much like uh, when they're not going to run the ball 50-50 like another team would, their selection and their diversity comes within their pass game. So there's so many different route combinations that they can throw at you. And as a coach, you have to kind of figure out, you know what, there are some that we have to take away. They're oxygen plays or oxygen routes. But there are some that uh, they're going to, if they want to call them at the right time, they're going to be in pretty good leverage situation. And you saw that a little bit today, uh, especially on some of the deep outs, that the ones that came open, whether they were completed or not. But Simple uh, answer to your question. Yes, they were the fastest and most, at, most athletic, and I had a chance to watch earlier this morning while we're sitting there twiddling our thumbs waiting for this game. I had a chance to watch Mount Union, and it's only going to get better, stronger, and faster. What's up, Ryan? How are you? Thank you, Ryan. You know, if you would have told me before, it, a little bit, yes. But if you would have told me before the season that we'd be sitting here on December 12th, I probably would have thought that it would have felt extremely similar. Uh, but this team is built in such a different way. And uh, there are some similarities, some commonalities, you know, building every week, getting better every week. Uh, we're definitely healthier. I mean, definitely healthier than we were back then. And I say that on the heels of maybe losing a player today. But um, this is the healthiest team we've ever had. And you guys know I've uh, 
tip my hat many times to Tommy Becker and the work that he and our players have done this offseason. It's wildly impressive in the strength and conditioning. Um, and the feeling is a little bit the same. I mean, we have really good players, but you were there for the 2012 run. You remember we had some really – those guys that were standing out there on the veranda, some really great marquee players that maybe garnered some more national attention. You know, one of the things that uh, I love about this team is uh, do you want to take a guess at how many preseason All-Americans we had? Take a guess, Ryan. You're sitting talking to one of the two teams playing left in the country. Zero. We had zero preseason All-Americans. And I think that that is a very, very acute testament to their focus and their work and their selflessness. I don't know how many we're going to end up with, honestly. Don't care. But when you look at a team that probably didn't get all the notoriety but grew every week into the team they are now, that reminds me very much of 2012. Great question. When, uh, since the first time we've ever been beaten Can I get a water? You agree with him in that? Yes. Well, I'm not going to say put a bit. I, 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 think, uh, I think, thank you very much. Uh, I think the manner in which we won this game was um, uh, maybe a little bit more controlling than other games that you see, and especially this time of year. Uh, physically, I was very happy with how we were able to, uh, well, I'm not going to say stop their run because you guys were there in the third quarter and watched it too, and they popped some real nice ones, but hold their run game in check and get pressure on the quarterback with our physicality. Uh, but also on offense, move the ball. And uh, I, I don't think it's a secret when you come and watch St. Thomas. I know it's not a secret because you guys all write about it. I read everything you write leading into the game, and you know what's coming, right? And for our kids to still continue to produce, I think, is really neat uh, when you know the run game's coming. And today we ended up with 60, uh, 60 carries for about 400 yards, and I think that's pretty cool. If you do what you've been doing all year, which you've been dominant, you win the national title, you have to take the game even to a, a higher or Right, there's no question. I've, I've said before, you know, when we got here, we were 2-8. and eight, And uh, the 240 teams in the country, we were ranked somewhere around 206. 206 when we first got here. And we went from 206 in the country to number five in the country in the first three years. And I made a comment after year three that I still think holds true now. The jump to go from number 206 to number five, believe it or not, is still not as steep as it is to go from five to one, and in this case, two to one. And I think that there is a very elite level of football that occurs at very few places in this country, and we're working to be one of those. But I'll, I'll tell you what, Bob, it's, uh, that's a high level of football that's being played in that national championship game. So we, we have a lot of work to do, a lot. Uh, I mean, there's no... Uh, we don't deal in uh, hatred or revenge. That's not us. That's not, that's not who we are, right? I mean, we try and be the best us as we can be. So I, I'm not, honestly, I don't care who it is. It could be a team I never heard of. I don't care. All we look for is opportunities. We work as hard as we can, together as we can, as long as we can, to just have an opportunity in the benefit of the doubt. And we have that opportunity right now. Oh, it's extremely gratifying, um, but it's really just a huge group effort. Um, from the day I got here, uh, all of us working in the weight room every single day uh, to the off season and uh, summer workouts and um, fall camp, just uh, sweating our butts off every day together. Uh, we put a lot of work in uh, to get to this point, and uh, it's, it's a group effort. It's the offensive line, the, the fullbacks, the tight ends, all working together as one, and it's extremely gratifying. Uh, yeah, I did. I have a lot of confidence um, in running the ball, no matter who we're going against. Sure, but, uh, I think uh, the big thing is that I'm not really sure what they're thinking. Uh, I'd really just focus on us and um, being the best us as we can be. Uh, we really just try to do that every game. Um, we try to wear people down and uh, just keep chipping away and chipping away, and eventually runs start to crack, and we really believe in that um, as an offense. 
Um, it's really just a testament to them. Uh, my offensive line, uh, I feel like they get stronger as the game goes on. And I just do my best to see the holes and hit them as hard as I can. Definitely, definitely. We knew coming in that it was going to be a lot of pass rushes, and they are a great uh, pass protecting O-line. And it, it took a lot to get to the quarterback as many times as we did. And that's just a testament to our coach, Coach K, calling in the great blitz, blitzes and us uh, doing the best that we could do. Oh, yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, they're really athletic. It was, it was tough uh, getting to their quarterback. Um, uh, Coach K just kept on reiter reiterating the fact that we had to uh, get workman sacks and just keep fighting and working hard for the sack because uh, those their 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 own line was definitely athletic for sure. Uh, I think we're playing really well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are trained tremendously well. Obviously, not to give you all the goods, right? Dom Tricolo. Yeah, Dom's a kid that uh, if you have an unsung hero type award, I think he would get it. Dom Tricolo plays the least sexy position in our entire program. He does. Fullback. When I go and I recruit Jordan Roberts or Nick Walvogel, a tailback, or whoever it is that year, I'm talking to that guy about getting 41 carries and rushing in the national semifinal at home for 265 yards. I go and, and I can't lie and recruit. I, I have... I, Oh, always honest. And I got to go and fly out to San Francisco, California, San Ignatius High School. And I got to say, Dom, you are one of the most uh, impressive guys that I've ever seen. And I'm going to let you play fullback and block ISO 50 times. And I might give you one carry a game, which he did not get today. And yet I think he is a microcosm of what our team is. You look at guys like him, guys like Ryan Winter. These are guys that could have done a myriad of things, gone to a lot of different places, but they chose to come here and not take the easy way out. And if we're built on anything, that's it. But it's, it's obviously it's the same for both, not you and you, but for a national championship game, would you like to see a full week between games rather than having to play? Yeah, I'm personally sure I'd like to see a full week so our kids, just I think in terms of health, I think it's appropriate, but I understand there's uh, powers beyond our control, and I get that. And I also understand a lot of the exposure that we do get is because of those powers, and I'm grateful for those. Uh, but it would be awfully nice, and I'll tell you what, the being down there, I mean, if I, if I had a dollar for every time I dreamt about, whether it's sleep dreaming or daydreaming, about being back with these guys, In the Hotel Roanoke, sitting in the lobby, and just enjoying being together, I'd be a very, very rich man. I cannot tell you the depth of my despair every time I realize that we're not there in December. And it hurts my heart, but it also fuels us and for us to have an opportunity to go back down there. And we've said it all along, Bob. We're playing. We don't play for stuff. That's not us. We're not a stuff program. I know some people would want to think we are, but we're not. We're not about trophies. We're not about wins. We're about being the best we can be and being together for one more week. That's why we fight. And to know that this group took it all the way to the end, regardless of what happens, is a blessing that I'll never, ever forget. Uh, maybe Pat might be able to help you. Well, they are frightening. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'll tell you what was wildly, I haven't seen all their scores. What was very impressive was their defense. I sat in the same room three years ago after this game, and I talked about how I thought that their offense got a ton of credit. Deservedly so. You put up those, I mean, those numbers are gaudy. I understand ours are close. I get it. But their defense that year had seven shutouts. Seven. Seven shutouts. Zero points, right? Six, seven. Am I right, Pat? Pretty darn close, right? And uh, they, were, they were so impressive statistically. And then, you know, in half hour now, we'll go upstairs and start looking at, at film and, 
Uh, then when you flip on the film, they're even more impressive. So I, I don't know yet. I'll be able to tell you tomorrow if you ask me that same question after we watch the film. But either way, I, 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 know, I know that they'll be prepared. And the difference, kind of going back to the last question, is that we're going down there for our second time in four years. Now, I think that's pretty neat. I really do. I might be off by a year or two, but Mount Union will be making their 20th trip in the past 22 years to that game. And that is a comfortable, comfortableness is not a word. That's a comfort that they have deserved and earned through their longevity and their hard work. That's wildly impressive. Dave, you were on that 2012 team as a freshman. After falling short the last couple years, what's it mean to you to have a chance to come back? I mean, looking back at that uh, 2012 trip, um, it's definitely one of my favorite memories of college. Um, so just having the opportunity to head back there with this team, which is different than the last team, but still um, a family to me, uh, means the world. I mean, really, it's not about the opponent. Um, they're a great team. I'm, I would have been excited to play either team, but really it's about spending another week with these guys. Oh, uh, Jordan's great. I mean, we, uh, we give him an inch, he takes a mile. So... Um, I, it's just, I mean, we had some great running backs in the past too, but really it's so much fun playing for, um, blocking for Jordan. I think the whole line feels that way. What record was it? Really? Congratulations. Uh, no, I don't really feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And absolutely. When we went down there, you know, we have an itinerary because if you know me, you know, everything in my life is an itinerary to the minute. Right. And so we came back and we had, I had a little red pen. And every time that something would happen, I did a bad job with this. You know, I, I flew. We, I chose to flew, fly down too late. That wasn't good. I chose two bad places to eat and when to eat. That wasn't very good. There are some things that are beyond our control with are you the home? Are you away? You this hotel, that hotel. But I think a lot of it really has to do with mitigating anxiety and that's something that we worked extremely hard on this off season and that's something that's getting tougher to do in society nowadays in an age all the more devoted to being results oriented instead of process oriented i think that's very very important there's a great psychologist i know you're like oh my gosh here he goes again talking about psychology there's a great psychologist her name is carol dweck and she talks about um people who are process oriented um, often finding far greater results than ones that are results oriented. And I think mitigating that anxiety is a huge part. Certainly there'll be 20 of those 26 seniors in David's class, 13 of them were on that trip and played or dressed for that game. So that's, those are pretty good numbers, but yes, just knowing what to do to kind of, uh, be a little bit more comfortable is important. I will tell you this, here's a funny little story. Get this one. So this morning we eat upstairs. So we're over in the view, right? Our, our dining service does an unbelievable job. And uh, all I think about on game day is trying to keep it calm, keep it cool, you know, until you get out on the field. And uh, so anyway, the uh, offensive line decides to take the elevator down, um, down, mind you. Uh, and they're only going down from the second floor to the first. OK, so I think we learned a lesson there. We're going down one floor. So they get in the elevator. and It's weird because just the other day I was driving, riding up in this elevator and I look at it and it says capacity 3,500 pounds, right? So I'm like, ah, it's going to hit 3,500 pounds, right? I'm thinking this is Tuesday. I'm going up to work in the elevator, 3,500 pounds. So anyway, I'm walking down for dinner, and I see Bill Carter and our, uh, our staff right there. They're doing a fantastic job, and they're, they're kind of trying to get the door open, the elevator on the first floor of the student center. And I'm saying, I said, Bill, what, everything all right? He goes, yeah, we got some, some people that are stuck in there. Now, this is a campus of 6,800 people, right? So every, it's busy. Everything's going on, you know? So I said, okay. He goes, ah, we got the fire department. They'll get, they'll get here. So I said, okay. And I start walking. I take about 10 steps. And I turn around. I said, are those my players in there? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know. And he goes, uh, are you guys uh, football players? And I hear this one voice saying, 
Yes. <laughs> there were 10 guys, the offensive line. Who else was in there? It was uh, uh, two other freshmen were stuck in there. So anyway, get this. So I have, to, I have to stay in my game day routine, which is obviously after, not obviously, after I eat, I go to church. And I sit there and have a little time of reflection and enjoy uh, thinking about what I have to think about. And so he said, 1130, they'll be out. I said, that's good, because we have meetings at noon. He said, we'll get them out by 1130. This is at 1015 or something like that, right? So I said, okay, good. So I talked to the guys for a little bit. I said, keep sending me pictures. Keep sending me selfies so I know you're smiling. Okay, I don't want you. I, don't, I can't have a guy get nervous in there, right? So anyway, I go to church, and then I walk back. I'm on my way back. It's 1110. I'm like, boy, these guys still have 20 minutes in there. So I walk over to the elevators, and I thought I'd just sit, sit down and chat, chat with them a little bit so they weren't so nervous, and Bill wasn't there. So I go up to the door, and uh, I tell them, I say, guys, you know, this is someday you're going to laugh about this, trying to reduce that anxiety. I said, uh, you know, I got to tell you, there was this one time in 2011 when Curtis James texted me when I was at breakfast getting ready to go, and he goes, Coach, I was on my scooter coming over, and I got hit by a car. Oh, before the St. John's game. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then he texted me. He's like, but I'll be fine. I'm just going to be a little bit late. So, you know, I'm sitting here thinking our All-American Center. So I tell him the story, and I said, guys, it worked out well. We beat the team 63-7. to It was a fantastic day. I said, just relax. And, uh, and I said, are you guys doing okay in there? It was silence. And I was like, man, I must have really gotten to him. And right at that moment, the guy walked by. He goes, hey, Coach Caruso. Yeah, we got the guys out of there about four minutes ago. <laughs> I'm sitting there talking to a door. <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually, I was the only alignment that uh, wasn't in there. But every single other one was. So, yeah, that... Uh, yeah, um, the last couple of weeks I've been pretty banged up, actually. Um, so I didn't get as many plays in there, but um, it was really the same um, same game plan, same scheme. Um, it just uh, worked out really well today, and um, we really fought for each other. As good as I can be, yeah. <laughs> It's a great opportunity. We just take it one week at a time, and I'm just happy that we had another week together. Uh, like Coach said, we didn't have the high-profile players coming in, so we we had to earn <clears throat> earn our respect uh, this whole year. And I think this week is a culmination of all that. Oh, yeah, and it wasn't on the punt cover. He just caught – he got the wind knocked out of him on the play before that, and he's – yes, he's fine, and we could have had an opportunity to put him in the game if we needed to and wanted to. We chose not to, and um, I think that was also kind of cool. You know, you have a, sh a smaller roster of 58 guys, but um, everyone played. The threes on both sides of the ball played, and we're in a national semifinal game. So we had the ability because of the work that was done to keep him out, and we took, that, took advantage of that. I'm sorry, what's that, Pat? The one at the end, Richie Donovan, we don't know about. So I and I won't know. You can call me tomorrow, but I won't know probably for about another 45 minutes. Um, you know, he, he could be fine and go. He's as tough as they get, um, but not sure if if Richie's uh, good to go right now. And we might not even know until Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, we get a little more enjoyment out of running, but uh, in in the end of the day, I know that the coaches are going to give us the best play calls um, to be uh, most productive on the field. So um, they had a great defense, and they put up a good fight, but uh, I'm really happy with the outcome today. Uh, my favorite player gr uh, growing up was Walter Payton, and um, I love the way he runs. Um, he he had this motto, "Never die easy." And um, you know, from a very young age, I I tried to emulate that, and uh, I still run like that today. Um, I never want to go down easy. I never want to die easy. And um, 
So when I get it, I just, um, you know, I, I run as hard as I can, as fast as I can. And um, with no selfishness in my heart, I try to run for my brothers and for God, first and foremost.